Blessed is the man that walk at nothing at the council of the heathen, and I sit at the seat that the seat can't fall. But his delight is in the love of the Lord, and in this Lord I see I did it sunrise and sundown. Him I go dear like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring out fat, fruit in the season. Him live never I go wither, and whatsoever him dwell shall prosper. Yay! 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 The Lord is I shepherd I shall not want. He make it I lie down in a green pastures. Him lead it I beside still water them. Him restore it I soul. Him lead it I not a part of I trust not him name sake. Yay! Though I rasta, I go walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall never fear no bandolo. Yay! Even though I and I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can't fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, them comforted I and I. Uno prepared a table before I, in the presence of our enemy, them, who anointed I head with no oil. Yea! How mouse of Bolisa had done water, there was a sick layer for. How mouse of Bolisa! How mouse of Bolisa! How mouse of Bolisa had done water, a sick layer for. I and I give thanks and I say unto your name, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Oh, ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I give thanks. And I say unto your name, King of kings and Lord of lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Amasa Yahuda, Yahuda, Amasa, Nagusto, Nagusto, Daniel, Am, Koma, Ya Sataya. Ya so a pio, 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 aya. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushudamo, where we speak truth to power. And remember, we are in the service of God and country. Yes, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Jah, shall therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And where two centuries meet in the name of the Most High, Jah, are so Jaja day. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushudamo, where we speak truth to power. And my name... Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. Each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something some shows cooking, something nutritious cooking. And it's so symbolical of this beautiful continent called Africa. Here now. Now, the black pot represents the continent of Africa. And the ingredients in the black pot that produce the food also represent us as a people. Now, watch. The whole black pot is so huge, it contains all the ingredients. Just like the continent of Africa is so huge and contains all of us. Now, the ingredients in the black pot are of different shapes and sizes, different smells, aromas, and even tastes and colors. Yet, they agree to be subjected to heating in one black pot to be able to produce food. That is the same thing we have to do as a people. Put away all our differences. Play on the continent of Africa. And develop the continent of Africa. The interesting thing about the black pot is that the ingredients do not sacrifice for their own sake. But for the sake of the people who would enjoy that later. Same way on the continent of Africa, we as a people must sacrifice looking up to the next generation to come out and enjoy. We must be very selfless. This is the black pot aka Kukushunamo where we speak truth to power. And of course, my name, Black Rasta, our numbers are scrolling on the screen. Pick that up and speak to us. Do business with us. We are waiting to do business with you. Now your business on this show is going to be seen all over the continent of Africa and beyond. Remember, we are on Pan-African TV. Africa's only Pan-African TV. And we are masters of Pan-Africanism. We are also on Loud Silence TV. Seen all over the world. And via the power of satellite. 
everybody sees this show and we are number one on the screens when it comes to pan-africanism this is the black pot aka kuku show them all and here we don't criticize if we must criticize we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy hey we are in the service of god and country today my brother my sister we have a lot of things to share with you all right so let's look at the very first story rolling up your screens right now watch it what does it say hey watch it it says daddy lumba others ungrateful who is daddy lumba now daddy lumba is a legendary ghanaian musician he's known worldwide in fact in africa almost everybody has ever heard the music of daddy lumba he's a legend music legend and we know him and we love him how did he start he started recording when he went to germany in fact at that time his immigration status wasn't very good he teamed up with another musician called Nane Champo, and together they formed the Lumba Brothers. They released hits after hits. It was Nane Champo who would bring the music to Ghana, promote it in Ghana, because at that time, his immigration status was cool. It took Daddy Lumba some time to be able to sort this out before he started coming to Ghana. So for several years, Daddy Lumba was never seen in Ghana. And when everything was okay with the music in the days, when cassettes were selling, CDs were selling, Daddy Lumba did not bother to come on stage to sing at all. He didn't like performances. All he wanted was to produce the music, set the music out, let the fans buy the music, let him make his money, will never appear on stage. But today it's a different story. He's been struggling from that time. Now nobody buys cassettes, nobody buys CDs, People would pay you to come and perform the music as a real musician. And some of the times that we've seen Daddy Lumba on stage is either singing off key or he's singing off beat. And we cannot hide this. Music cannot hide. People have criticized Daddy Lumba. You can't eat your cake and have it. Better still, you can't have your cake and eat it. So Daddy Lumba has been struggling for some time now, even with his health. We all remember he was in a certain church where Prophet Bedukobi prayed for him because he was going through some really terrible health issues. It looked like he got well. He appeared on stage time after time, albeit very terrible performances. Well, so what could be happening to Daddy Lumba? Is he broke? Is he not broke? He's always been seen as a wealthy person. He owns a chain of schools in the Ashanti region, a chain of houses in so many different areas. This could not be a broke man. But could he be broke? Maybe he's falling on evil days. But what is happening? This is the man. They call him Dr. Manfred Techi, a.k.a. J.D. Oh gosh. Now he is the CEO of Joy Industries. It's a herbal outfit right here in Ghana. It was extremely popular a few years back. But it looks like the boss has fallen on bad days too. So Lumba falling on bad days. Boss of uh, Joy Industries, uh, JD falling on bad days. What really is the issue about these bad days? And what's the connection? Let's look at it. Oh, here it comes. Come! Let's look at it. What does it say? That the Lumba ordered to return customized Tundra. In America, they say tundra. We say tundra for obvious reasons. We like the mm, mm, mm sound as African people. Here I mean, I says the chief executive officer of Joy Industries Herbal, Dr. Manfred Techi, popularly called JD, has asked that the Lumba to return a customized tundra he gave the musician and some money he owes him. And when we talk about a customized tundra, we know what it is. Certainly it's not a customized Tundra. He's talking about a customized number plate. Because Daddy Lumba's cars are all DL1, DL2, depending on the number of cars he has. And DL stands for Daddy Lumba, right? Watch this. What does it say? In a video shared on blogger Zion Felix's page on Instagram, the CEO complained bitterly about how ungrateful some celebrities have been to him, including Daddy Lumba, after he helped them in their hard times. When you introduce your brand and tell them to post on their social media pages, they will tell you to sign a contract with them. Those times we had over 20 artists on one platform. Yes! 
Many of them owe us, even that the Lumba owes us. The money we gave that the Lumba, eh? and also a customized Tundra, eh? tell him to return our car. He had shows at which he was supposed to perform. And he failed to do so, not even half the shows. Our money and our car eh? are with him. Today, mm, today, eh? mm, they have all turned their backs on us. He filmed in the video. According to Mr. Manfred, there was a time when many celebrities were in crisis and he stepped in to put together a show to support them financially. However, when he needed them to promote their brands, they requested for a contract. Some of the celebrities have helped, we have helped in Ghana. I hear I am not saying this without any backing. We helped a lot of celebrities when they were in crisis, but none of them has spoken about it. And we live to see. Mm -mm. Yes, I'm saying this with all seriousness. When some celebrities had their market go down, Joy Industries as a company, as a corporate entity, had them on so many different shows. But today, there is a serious economic hardship worldwide. Underline that. Today, there is a serious economic hardship worldwide, he added. Celebrate and we live for it. Yes. Millionaire celebrate it. We will market a call from Joy Industries as a company, as a corporate, as a corporate entity. Yet the woman both shows me pray, but and there worldwide economic situation. I hear you know who, who introduce your brand now. See your post our social media page or back at yourself only mean sign contract. Those times we were fielding over 20 artists on on one platform. Yes. The Brena Craddy Yanka, Daddy Lumba Num Craddy Yanka, Daddy Lumba Sky and Mano, as I customize a car, Tundra, a car, Mano, Munka, Daddy Lumba, or return it to industries, Kana, Yaya, customizer manner, show side in a bebon, one book, even half of the show by a Zika, and Yanka, a one inch, Munka, Daddy Lumba. Tell you the bloggers, and then, woman, woman, you know, I don't know, my chairman. Yes. Wow. You heard him. He spoke in Chi. Those of you who don't understand Chi, it's the same things I read earlier. He said, Daddy Lumba, return the customized car. You are being ungrateful. It is true. I mean, but I want to ask this question. When you help somebody, are you expecting that they come back and help you? In that case, there's no spiritual reward. That's why it says when you give with the right, don't let the left see. True? Now, when you help people, are you giving them a loan so they return to you after? Or what? Now, according to what Manfred said, hear me now. Listen. When some of them had their businesses go down, he decided to organize concerts and put them on the platform. To perform and be paid, it means he gave them work. He didn't give them something for free. That's not the meaning. Oh, these days you are quite broke. I'm going to give you work so you can put money in your pocket. Come and work and be paid. It's different from come and take something pro bono. It's different from, oh, come and take freebies. Right? And I prefer that. When a man is down, it's better to give him work to do and be paid rather than to give him freebies like is done all over Africa. A lot of people have become so lazy. All they are interested in is give me so I can eat. They will never ask you to give them work so they will do and be paid. No, sir. And it is very common in our country and some other parts of Africa. I travel to so many different countries in Europe, America and some other places. And people would come up to you, even homeless people, and tell you that, well, I need to eat right now, but I need you to give me work so that you can give me some food. You understand? 
Because you are a strong man, you have two arms and two legs, just like the man you're begging. If you are falling on bad days, every other person can fall on bad days. Yeah? So you need to work so that you can eat. The Bible says it. The hand that does not work must not eat. So work first before you eat. So if JD gave them work to do so they could eat, that's a kind gesture, but it's not free. So today he cannot feel so entitled and say that, oh, I gave you work to do the other time. Right now I need you, you must also do it. How about if they are not in a position to do that? And he's talking about social media. Put it on your social media page. A lot of musicians have signed contracts. Now that the world has opened the eyes of so many different musicians to so many different things. They've signed contracts with different companies. What they did in the past five years, they cannot do now. Maybe they just walked up on platforms and performed. Now they have signed management contracts. And therefore, they might not be able to come to you and offer services like they did in the past. That notwithstanding, people don't have to be ungrateful. I know Manfred. He loved my show on radio. He brought his product on my radio show. He loved my show. Once in a while, he would call me and say, oh, you are doing a good job. I like this show. I love it. Oh, you are the guy. You are the man. I remember in those days, if a chocho, may his body, mind, and soul rest in perfect peace. Another herbalist who produced soap and so many different things like that. Put my photo on his product. Family, family, there was no contract, nothing. And when Joy Industries saw that, I remember Manfred told me, oh, Black Rasta, we wanted to use your photograph and we wanted to pay you good money and sign a contract with you. But we saw that you were already on chocho's team. And I said, well... It is true, but Chocho is my uncle. And I didn't sign any contract with, 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 with him. But uh, I can't tell him, take off my photo. That was how come I was never signed to do anything for Joy Industries. But I will not lie that he didn't give me money and say, so take this for transportation. There was a time I even had a concert, nationwide concert that he came in to support. I am so grateful. But when he made money so much, this was the beginning. When Joy Industries was just coming up, struggling, struggling. But when he made so much money and built a TV station, radio stations, I couldn't get him again. You call him on his phone, he would not answer. Eh? This is a little personal, but that is the truth. I'm just walking you through a certain journey. You would call him and say, oh, send him a message and say, yo, I have a nationwide concert and I want to see how we can partner. Oh, uh, we are not interested or, oh, we cannot do anything now. Well, I just felt that maybe in the days that he loved me, he did what he could do. Now his tastes have changed. Yes, so many musicians he put on the uh, bill. They played. We all heard how much money he was paying people. But we didn't get the opportunity to enjoy that money at that point, And we are not envious. As long as our brother is eating, we would also eat. From our brother eating, we also have the opportunity to eat in one way or the other. We are not envious. People went to him. I remember Sir Kodia even went to him. And they had a concert in Tamale. They were so angry. It was supposed to be a nationwide concert. Joy Industries abrogated the contract and stopped it after the Tamale show because they said they were just expecting Sarkodia to come out of his room and shake hands with the sponsors from the hotel. They were in the same hotel. Sarkodia would never come out. And they said, oh, this guy is arrogant, blah, 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 blah. And they abrogated the contract. So these are people who have emotions. You understand? Emotions, they might not insist on a contract. You understand? But their emotions are very strong. Now Joy Industry says, hey, we gave you money. We didn't demand any contract. You played here, you played here. When you were down, we helped you. Now we are also down. Why are you not supporting us? I think that we shouldn't feel so entitled. When we help people, we should let it go. That's why when I help people, I forget that I've even helped them. But when people help me, I remember it till I die. I will remember. Because I want to be able to repay. Not everybody is like me or like you. We must not feel so entitled when we support people. We might not see them to be ungrateful. We don't know what they are going through. 
But whatever it is, Joy Industries, I appreciate you for the support you gave me at the time I needed it. Even though at the time that you got so huge, I tried to reach out to you. It was never possible. When people grow bigger, they have new friends. Now that you are falling on bad days, I believe that we can be friends again so you can rise. Some of us, we help people who are falling on bad days to rise. When they rise, they forget us. It's okay. That's how God created us. To raise people from the dust. When they reach the air, then they forget us. Hallelujah. But, Daddy Lumba, was Abada. Hmm? Kachi, 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 unya Abada. And so many artists have spoken ill of Daddy Lumba. If it's true, a legend must not have all these terrible things around him. I leave it here. This is the Black Pot, aka Kukushunumu, where we speak truth to power. Come! Next story. Minister begs against panic withdrawals. Jesus have mercy. Who is this minister? Is he still in power? What kind of a dirty country is this? Look at this man. He's still in power. I can't believe this. There's a, an actor that I know who would say, I can't think far, I can't think madness. This man is still in power. The last time we heard about him, they said, oh, after reading the budget, he would go. When he goes, what is next? This guy is trying to do whatever he can do to bury all of us. For him, it will be a very terrible legacy to be sacked as a finance minister. So he's in there now because of ego. Nothing more. These guys are not patriotic. When money was going to his bank, the bank that he helped found, yeah, data bank, he was borrowing on behalf of this nation and they were making money. Later when we discovered it, what did he say? He had resigned from that bank long ago, yet you were the founder of the bank. He had resigned because of health reasons, yet he was strong enough to run a bigger country's economy. The small data bank, health issues, you can't. But the big country, Ghana, you can handle that. Such a greedy guy. Very dangerous, greedy guy. These guys all, Satan is waiting to roast them in hell, one after the other. Satan is a homosexual. He will deal with their backside night and day, morning, afternoon, evening. That will be their breakfast, lunch, and supper. Wicked, greedy people. I can't wait for Satan to deal with Nana Kufuado in hell. And all his people around him who are making the lives of Ghanaians so unbearable. Sometimes, the best way to help people is just to walk away. And these guys have refused to walk away. Listen to what he's saying. Listen, watch. No need to rush for your monies. And this is what Ophoriata is telling Ghanaians. What monies? Several Ghanaians have thronged their various financial institutions to withdraw their savings and investments to avoid losing both their principal and interest. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Ghanaians are rushing to the banks to withdraw their principal. And if possible, get back their interest. Because his bank, the data bank, some people allegedly went to deposit 10,000 Ghana cities. And when they went back to get their principal, that's the money they deposited, plus interest, they were told that, oh, we have fallen on bad days. And for that matter, even the principal of 10,000, we have given it a dangerous haircut. There's a big aboy in there. And then back, the back bush has also been scraped off. Now it's Sakura. Take 8,000. What the heck? Come! Come! This panic withdrawal is based on reports that some customers of Data Bank and Echo Bank have lost hundreds of CDs on their investment, which has, to an extreme, affected their principal, that's initial deposit. Reacting to this at a press conference in Accra on Monday, December 5, the Minister of Finance, Kenofuriata, has said uh, there was no need 
for customers to withdraw their monies from their banks and savings and loans institutions. Financial Stability Fund has been established by government to ensure the, uh, the depositors' funds are rescued, secured, right? There is no need to rush for your money because setting forbearances would also be given to these institutions to help. So, in essence, this is an opportunity to have a pretty orderly exit through this and use that period also to build up an export-driven economy to get our macro statistics in order, Kenoforiata said. It will be recorded that on November 23, 2022, some customers of Data Bank said they were unable to assess their funds and investments. Mm -mm -mm. That's it away. And try and get me the photograph of Nam One. I'm coming to Nam One soon. Listen, hear me now. You see what this finance minister is saying? He has not denied that the bank that he helped found is not giving haircuts, dangerous haircuts, unprofessional haircuts to people's investments. He has not denied that people have deposited their money in the same banks that he helped found. In fact, he found it. He has not denied that. All he's saying is that there's no need to rush. Oh. We are pumping money. We are helping to bring some money so that everything will be okay. Oh. No need for panic withdrawals. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Squeeze me. Squeeze me. Jesus have mercy. Nam one. Nam one. Nam one. How many times have I called your name? Your spirit is very alive and strong. That's what they did to him. Young man came. Full of alacrity and energy. He established what was known as men's gold. And you can see men's gold in the corner. Investments. People were coming to invest. He rocked all the banks in Ghana. Hey! Everybody wanted to go there and invest. For several months. Running into year and beyond. That was the in thing in Ghana. Now the same demons, finance gurus, and demons from hell incited investors and said, Hey! Come! Incited Ghanaians and told them, Hey! This guy is a thief. He doesn't have the right lines and so. Hey, this guy, hey, he's about to run, oh. He has a private jet to go and take your money. And what happened? Panic withdrawals. They all descended on this man who had never ever defaulted. Because they realized that if they allowed him to continue, he was going to rock all the banks in Ghana. Everybody was taking off their investment from the banks and going to this guy because he gave them what? More money as interest. On their investments instead of sitting with him picking his brain and trying to tweak 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 and work things out the destructive vandals that we have in this country economic vandals crashed him down rocked him down and turned this man into a pauper at the end of the day they arrested him and jailed him like a common criminal in dubai he won his case there they brought him here jailed him again Disgraced him like a common Christmas fowl. We all, my brother and my sister at the time, ate from Namwan's hands. In fact, I was even late. Enjoying, I don't know why I'm always late. Oh. I don't know why I'm always late. Some people started eating from Namwan's plate a very long time ago. Before we heard about it, we could only manage two and a half months of eating from the plate. And then this trouble came. My brother, my sister, today the finance minister, the lousy charlatan finance minister is saying what? Don't rush for panic withdrawal so because we are pumping money to handle some of these things. Can you believe this? They did this to Namwan. They came back trying to do the same business Namwan was doing. They didn't have that business acumen. Today, 
The devil himself is chasing them. May these people rest in the hottest part of hell if they do not change their ways. Hey! Minister Bex against panic withdrawal. Sir! Really? So there's something called panic withdrawals. Oh, so it's bad. When you ask Ghanaians to go to Namwan and take all their money because he was a thief and was running away, and every Ghanaian woke up early in the morning by 2 a.m. and was knocking at the offices of Namwan to collect the money. What happened? Namwan couldn't pay. Panic withdrawals. Today, you are begging against panic withdrawals. Abaya di bote chino. En pariba. Ya di beshe baansu. What is good for the goose? Is good for the gander. When we return, we have more to talk about. In the interim, think about something. When you look at the quote. Hey! Wayo! is the black pot aka kukushunamu where we speak truth to power and my name black rasta here we don't do politics what we do is called patriotism listen my brother if a quarter of Ghanaians will be patriotic ghana will be better than the garden of eden if a quarter of Ghanaians will be patriotic god will leave heaven and come here quarter what don't we have in this country? In fact, you can walk on the street and spit on the sidewalk and it will grow into a plant. We are so blessed as a people. Anywhere we walk, we only need to tap the ground five times and water will start coming off of it. What do you want that you won't get? The kind of atrocities that wicked people have meted out to this country and we are still standing here, then you must know that God has a plan to make Ghana the Garden of Eden and even beyond. The country is so blessed. Sometimes I pray and I ask God, Oh God, why do you make me like this? You should have made me to be president of this country and let's see where this country would go. But you rather made me a kingmaker and God keeps talking to me. He tells me, not everybody can be president. Not everybody can be a leader. Some have to be followers. And some have to be kingmakers. Whilst others are kings and chiefs. I accept it. I will never be president because I know my destiny. Never. But my duty is to make sure that the right king is crowned. And when the king goes off, it is my duty to pronounce the mind of God on him and get him out so the people will not suffer. I'm behaving like the Samuel of this generation. Anointing holy oil into office. Believe it or not. Next thing, let's look at it. What is he saying? Driver, not just a driver, taxi driver, my own taxi driver, taught good lesson. A taxi driver has been taught a very good lesson. This is the taxi driver. He has his hands handcuffed 
and a prison officer is sitting by him. And when you look at the face of the prison officer, he is very sad for two reasons. Number one, he has to use his own money to carry this guy in a taxi to the courthouse every time they call his case. The prison does not make any allowances available for such things. It is in Ghana that when a prisoner or when somebody has been convicted of a certain crime and is supposed to be taken to the prison to start his time, they don't have a prison van. So they go out and hail a taxi. Taxi, come. And the prison officer goes to sit in there. In Ghana, they mostly do not hold guns. But one or two of them may hold some 2BC gun. A gun that looks like a fufu uh, a, a stick. He's carrying it. Before you shoot, you have to hit the bottom on a rock. Doom, 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 doom. Shake it and boof. Then you see powder comes like an explosion. You hit again. Poof, they call it tear buffet. My brother, my sister, this story is sad. Watch it. What does it say? Ghana word. Driver jailed for bribing police officer with five cities. You know what five cities is? Those of you who live in America. You know what five cities is? One American dollar is equivalent to about 15 Ghana cities. It's three times. Five cities. When you divide the dollar three times, you get this amount of money. This is less than one dollar. One dollar is equivalent to 15 Ghana cities. This guy gave a police officer five cities. Come, let's look at it. Many commercial drivers have normalized, if not justified, bribing police officers to get away with committing road traffic offenses. A taxi driver, David Ayensu, who worked at Tudu in Accra, was part of the unlucky few that got hooked by the law after bribing a police officer with the Motor Traffic and Transport Department, MTTD, of the Ghana Police Service with five cities. Five Ghana cities to atone for his service. According to Ayensu, the MTTD officer caught him driving with an expired driver's license. But he bribed the uniformed man with a paltry amount of five Ghana cities in a bid to evade the consequences of his action. My renewed license was seized by another police officer. So I was using an old one. I knew I had erred. So when the officer took the expired license, I quickly took out five Ghana cities and filled in and, and, fill, uh, and filed it in an AMA operational card. That means he filed it inside. Look at the term. He filed it in an AMA. That's Accra Metropolitan Authority, right? Or Assembly. Uh, operational card and handed it to him. He recounted. Ayensu said the patriotic police officer returned both licenses to him without taking the money. He said the officer went ahead to discharge him. He told whatever, whatever crime check Ghana.org that whilst he was trying to escape from some other patrol men who hooted at him to stop, he flouted traffic light rules and crossed it as he had turned yellow. The taxi driver said he ignored the police officer because he claimed the cop would have let him go if he knew he attempted to give his colleague a bribe. The other officer chased me with a motorbike, but I refused to stop. Even when some pedestrians prompted me, I crossed the yellow light at a point where the officer caught up with me. He said, the young man said, the passenger aboard his vehicle confronted the police officer when he was asked to get off the car for another one. The driver gave your colleague Five Ghana cities. So why are you following him? The passenger asked the police officer. Ayensu said a brawl 
ensued between the passenger and the officer, but he claimed he did not get involved, but his car key uh, scattered the peace officer. Mm. Bring back the story. I'm going to show you something. Bring back that same story. Next page. Watch this. Watch this. He said he gave five CDs to one driver. Watch the last paragraph. My renewed license was seized by another police officer. So I was using an old one. I knew I had aired. So when the officer took the expired license, I quickly took out five Ghana cities and filed it in an AMA uh, operational card and handed it to him. He recounted. Next page. Watch the first paragraph here. Ayensu said the pat patriotic police officer returned both licenses to him. Without asking, without taking the money. That's it. So the police officer was, was patriotic. He decided that the five cities in there, he will not take it. Maybe he explained to the policeman and told him that, listen, sir, I really have the license. But what happened was that one other policeman seized it. So I'm using this old one. But if you give me time, I'll be able to provide that. And maybe the policeman said, okay, well, you can go. Whatever happened. But he crossed the light. Another policeman chased him. He refused to stop. The passenger in it fought the policeman. And that is what normally happens. The passengers are more vocal than even the drivers. When the driver is stopping, passenger will start shouting, hey, hey, hey. Go, go, go. Don't, who is he to stop you? Yet your lives are in danger. What kind of a crooked country is this? Instead of having passengers tell the driver, stop. This is an officer. Because the officer has also lost his respect by drinking whilst on duty, taking bribe. The passengers don't respect them. Motorists don't respect them. But my brother, I want to doff my heart. For this policeman who, number one, refused the five Ghana cities. I want to pray that he didn't refuse it because it was just a small five CD note. I want to say that he refused it because he's been listening to this show and watching us. And he believes he wants to be part of changing the new generation. I salute you. I wish your name had been put here. I would have looked for you to shake hands with you. The other policeman who chased him. God bless you. It doesn't matter if he gave him one penny or one million dollars. He has been arrested. He's doing time. This is what every policeman, every policeman worth his salt in Ghana and the whole of Africa should do. It's more terrible in Nigeria. It's more terrible in Nigeria. My brother, my sister, to God be the glory. Let him go there. When he comes out, he will learn sense. All police, please dignify your profession. Right now, nobody wants to be police. They only use it as a default career. They want something they don't get, so they fall on what? The police. We hear so many people say, Oh, I'm coming here. Police crowd, I'm pay. Eh, who they say, we cry. Manya we crowd there. Pube say, we were pay police. Be cry, man, me cry. Now me dey show me half an. Now me yano kakra kakra. Me nyan fu fobi ana ma koye na ma jai police. Hey, police e juma na udi e o how far no? Police e juma e a whole institution. How can you bring half spirited people into the police service? Who recruits these people at all? Oh, what a country! Oh, Yahua! This is the black pot, aka Kuku Show. No more. Come. When we return. We'll be talking more. Whoa! Come on.
Go on, skip a judge. Blackboard. Coco show them. This is the Black Pot, aka Coco Shunam, where we speak truth to power. Next story. And it looks like it's a twerking story, right? Mm -mm -mm. Twerking versus backsliding. You know what backsliding is? In those days when Michael Jackson came. Backsliding! Jesus have mercy! Some of these things you see and you want to go to heaven quickly. Jesus have mercy! Hey! Hey! We think with this. Her name is Muesha Buduong. Muesha is from my village in the Upper West Region. I know her family, oh. That's my sister. Oh. Moesha Buduong once again faces backlash for twerking. Moesha is a beautiful girl. She is. She has a nice shape. Yes, she might have visited the surgeon. They injected here, injected there, cut here, cut here, added some here, removed some from there. Like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> like sculpturing, body sculpturing. They did it for her. She was one of the first in Ghana among the new crop of let me not use a harsher word, slay queens. So she got into it. In fact, she granted an interview to CNN and she agreed that she was a prostitute in one way or the other. I sleep with a man because of his money. And if you sleep with a man because of the money, who are you? Prostitute? At a point, she made some money here and there. Then she said she had seen Jesus Christ. She was all over social media screaming and saying she had given herself to God. She was not ready to do any such thing again. Do you have the twerking video? Oh my God. Actress Moesha Buduong seems to be enjoying her life by jamming to songs that cause her to jump to the dance floor and shake what she's got. Mm -mm -mm. Her harmless twerking moves always uh, uh, catches. All right, well, her harmless twerking moves always catch the attention of bystanders and bloggers who are eager to record the repented actress in action. A section of social media users that uh, seems displeased has pointed accusing fingers at Muesha based on her early statement of ditching her old ways and accepting Christ Jesus. According to crit critics, she seems to be swaying away by uh, delighting in the things of the world. That shit away. So if you see Jesus, you can't twerk, twerk anymore. So if you see Jesus, you can't twerk. Why? Why? I'll fire them in a professional way. Why? Why are we so hypocritical? Sometimes it looks like it's a charade. Sometimes it looks like it's a managed play. Why? So because I've seen Christ, I can't dance anymore. Because I see Christ, I can, I'm not going to shake my booty anymore. I can't twerk anymore because I've seen Christ. What is happening to us? Yet the people who are casting the first stone, in fact, some of them even sleep with animals. They have sex with animals. Some of them are doing things that we can't even say on TV. My brother, my sister, listen. When Moesha became a Christian, how many Christian organizations went to her aid? How many Christian organizations went to help her? 
those Christians who were throwing, casting stones at her and praying that she should die. And all of a sudden, she became a Christian. Did they go to say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. We know that when you became a Christian, you lost this, your livelihood. You lost that, you lost that. We have come to donate bananas and plantains so you can eat and have a healthy body. We invite you to church. They were only interested in inviting her to church so they could have money. We know them. The moment a celebrity gives his life to Christ, he is a hot kick. All churches want to invite him there so that fans will come there and donate money to Jesus Christ in quotes. What kind of hypocrisy is this? That is why, because of this pressure, when celebrities become Christians, they leave whatever has been their livelihood. Look at what happened to Ophorian Ponsa. Ophorian Ponsa became a born again Christian, very talented. He said he was not going to do any music again. If anything at all, he would do gospel. And he started growing lean. Koshokwa hit him next. The next thing that hit him was total hunger. The next song he came out with was Alewa. And they called him Pastor Alewa. Nobody would doubt that Ophorian Ponsa is ordained. He has the grace of God on him. But because of one false move, second false move, everybody is ridiculing him now. What are the Christian organizations doing to help new converts stand on their feet? Remember, they were in a certain world where they were great people and held. So when they leave that world, it's like beginning, they are going to be empty. Do you visit them? Do you help them to be able to make money? I remember in those days, I walked to a certain church and the pastor sent me away because he had heard me on radio. Years back, talking against the Bible, talking against Jesus and all that. And when he saw me, he just remembered, ah, this guy is here to film me and go and insult me. Uh, that man, if you don't leave, I'm not going to preach anymore. I remember. Hey, 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 leave Moesha alone. Moesha, twerko. And when you twerk, please do not film yourself. Twerk for as much as you want in your bedroom. Do not film yourself twerking. Who are you twerking for? Give me your address. I'll come and visit you one of these days with bananas. Bananas. Big bananas. Big one. Big. The bananas from Tiobodom. The big ones. I'll bring you cucumbers as well. And yams. Dash it away. I'm about to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at this. Senchi approach will save Ghana now. Oh, Senchi is a small town. On the way to Adomi area, the Adomi Bridge. How many of us remember the Adomi Bridge? Is there that beautiful act and all that? <laughs> He's looking for Adomi Bridge. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is the man. He's a man of God. Hallelujah. He has spoken. What has he said? People are really suffering. Our confidence level is low. You senchi approach, Reverend Opuni Frimpong fires Akufuado. Now all the men of God are firing. Shall we read? Come here. Ah. With where we have read now, it is not about the NPP being in power. It will help. Let us listen to every Ghanaian. The crisis affects everybody and not only NPP members. People are really suffering. He told you TV in an interview. We need a more visible approach. Calling for collective response. And humbly, I want to say, we are not seeing that, he said. He said the president should listen to the masses 
and stop the situation whereby the party in power feels it is the only one that can solve the current economic situation. Or better still, the only one with common sense. Sinchi consensus approach was good. If the current government will use it during these difficult times, it would be there to the benefit of all of us. Look at it. So what is the Senchi thing at all? National Economic Forum, the Senchi Consensus. From May 12th to the 15th, 2014, 140 Ghanaians drawn from organized labor, Ghanaian private sector, professional associations, financial institutions, security services, traditional leaders, political parties, parliamentarians, the clergy, uh, policy think tanks, academia, civil society, and government ministries met in Senchi in the spirit of our shared interest and commitment for building a national consensus for economic and social transformation as well as our collective pursuit of inclusive and sustainable development. That's it away. So what is this man of God saying? He's saying that involve all these people. Let's take the century approach. Let people sit down and think. Talk about how we will be able to run the economy. Talk about how we can solve these problems. Come! That's it. All the man of God is asking for is in 2014, in the days of President Mahama, there was something called the Senchi Consensus, where different Ghanaians from different parts of corporate Ghana and beyond met to look at the way forward for the country. My brother, my sister, well, this might work in the interim. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. To God be the glory. Hey! <laughs>